Welcome back everyone, this is Mondo All Day, back to another video. And in this video, I'll be doing an overview of two different Wonder Woman figures. We have Wonder Woman from the Shazam Fairy of the Gods movie wave, and Wonder Woman from the Flashpoint storyline, the Gold Label Target exclusive figure. As always, I'll be talking about the figures itself in terms of the articulation, sculpture, and paint, and if it's worth your purchase or not. Before we get started, make sure you hit the subscribe button to not only support the channel, but to keep up to date and watch videos like this. So let's take a look at the box for Flashpoint Wonder Woman. This side. The back. The other side. Top. And bottom. And we'll be doing an overview of the figure itself for Cyborg. So make sure you check that out. Front of the box for Shazam Wonder Woman. This side. The back. The other side. Top. And bottom. Alright, now let's take a look at each figure outside the box. As always, you do come with a card. The front of the card looks like for Wonder Woman. Flashpoint. The back of the card. Front of the card for Wonder Woman, Shazam. The back of the card. And for Flashpoint Wonder Woman, it does come with the final piece for Cyborg. I won't be talking about it too much, so we'll be doing an overview of this particular build -a figure figure. So, make sure you check that out. And it does come with a sword. Pretty detail on it. You got some scuff marks on here. Which I actually like on the blade and then you got more sculpture design here and it does have that the bronze handle which is pretty cool and then here is the the lasso of truth nice shiny gold which i really really like for wonder woman shazam the lasso all rolled up nicely and again you got that rope texture to it and it's nice painted gold and it does come with uh, her tiara. You can see the detail on here. Not a whole lot, but some detail on there, which looks nice. And they both come with a puck stand. Now we'll start off with the Shazam Wonder Woman. We'll start off with the articulation. So left, right. Why is my camera not picking up? There we go. Left, right. Up, down. It was not the greatest up down because it hits right here in her hair, which is unfortunate. When you go back, shoulder articulation, bicep, elbow, wrist. And you can tell this is a, an old school McFarlane because of the joints. You can see that ball joint, torso. So you got torso, it's fine. And then you got the swivel. Then leg, articulation, knees, ankles, which is not a whole lot because it does hit right there as well in the back. You can see that perfectly. And toes as well too. So overall, the articulation on this figure, the head is limited. The torso is not the greatest. And the ankle, of course, is not the greatest. But overall, it's fine overall. Now let's talk about the figure itself. And we'll start off with the head sculpture. And I got to say, the head sculpture... It's fine. It's supposed to look like the actress Gal Gadot. I think that's how you pronounce her name. And so it does somewhat look like her in certain angles. But when you look at it a certain way, it just has really like a puffy face. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just my figure. But certain angles, it looks like her. Other angles, it just <laughs> looks like she has a puffy face. I'm not hating on it. I'm not saying she's ugly. I'm just saying this particular figure, it has a certain look to it. So you kind of have to be careful what you get. You can see it perfectly right there where... This side, you can see more her cheekbone. Over here, is just kind of round. So, you can see that perfectly what I mean. It's nothing bad. It's just something that I noticed. You got the painted lips, the painted eyes, and the eyebrows, which is fine. And then you got the hair sculpture, which is a mixture of brown and light brown and dark brown. Nice little stylized hair. And so, the head sculpture, it's, again, fine. Mine just came... A bit deformed and again it does look like Gal Gadot, but same time it does at certain angles. In terms of the body sculpture, 
she's very thin in terms of like size and bicep and tricep and so forth. But she does have some armor pieces like you see right here. And they are painted, which looks really nice. Especially these pieces right here, nice bright silver. And of course that gold really does stand out a lot. Open fist or trigger trigger hands, both of them. And the other arm, there's not much to it. It does have some marking on here. I think it's just the paint. And again, her arm is just very slim, not much to it. But at least this is painted, so it makes it look really nice. In terms of the upper torso, I do like this paint here. It looks really, really nice. Especially that very thick textured feel to it. And of course, the nice bright red paint. And of course, that gold on there it looks really nice. See that? The texture, it looks really good. It does pop out. And there's the back of it as well, too. The back has this kind of, like, piece right here. I don't know if it's just mine. Leave it in the comment section if you have this figure. It yours looks like this. Maybe just mine came like this. But there's more to it in the back in terms of the sculpture design. And so, overall, the upper body, it looks good overall. I do like the red paint and the gold paint. Especially right here, the silver. It just makes the figure pop. But unfortunately, the body itself, or in terms of like her bicep and shoulders and stuff like that, they're very, very slim. I mean, it's supposed to look like Gal Gadot, and she does kind of have a slim body for Wonder Woman. So, there's that. Then the lower torso, you got whatever her skirt is. You have like a leather look to it, blue. And the gold looks nice. I like the painted. I like how this is painted gold, but here at the bottom, it's painted gold as well too. For certain angles, it doesn't look like it's painted gold, but it is. Then you have the muscle tone legs, which I actually like this version of Wonder Woman. And I say this version because, as I mentioned, there's two of them. This is going to be the re redo of the previous one. Because the previous one had just slim legs, no muscle tone at all. And it looked like wiener legs. This one, there's some tone you can see right here. The thigh muscle, right? The separation looks really nice. And then a little bit more in the back as well too right here. Can't really tell, but at certain angles you can see it. So I like that. And this Wonder Woman, well, she does squats as you can tell. And of course, because she has nice defined thighs. They're not really huge defined thighs, but you can see the muscle tone. Then you got the knees on here. The knee pads look nice, painted gold. Here you can see her long boots as well. Red with that nice gold accent. It looks really nice. What I like about this figure is the reds and gold just pop really stands out and you can feel that texture to it and you can see it as well too very very good detail on the boots as well too and so overall i gotta say the figure it looks good overall but the body upper body is very very slim there's not much muscle tone which is unfortunate because when i think of wonder woman i think of her being like not so much buffed out but at least have muscles like similar to her legs right here where she has muscles, but it's not super huge. You know what I mean? And so the upper body, it doesn't have muscle, but it does have the sculpture and the armor, in which it makes it pop. But the lower body has what I consider to me definition of Wonder Woman, which is huge legs, but not that huge. So where it's like, okay, it's a bit extreme. And the boots itself look really, really good. So overall, I got to say, good, solid Wonder Woman figure for Gal Gadot. And I believe it's going to be the last one that they will make because... Well, they're going to do reboot, so that's that. Now let's take a look at Wonder Woman Flashpoint. We'll start off with the articulation. So, head articulation. Left, oof, right. It's a bit stiff. It does articulate, but the hair does hit right here. Just keep that in mind. Up, down, ooh, not a whole lot. Up, down, wow. Very, very limited, especially here in the back as it hits. Shoulder articulation. Bicep. Elbow. Wrist, if I can figure out how she articulates her wrist. I believe it's like, is there wrist articulation? I don't think there's none. I don't see, I don't think there's any articulation on the wrist. Leave a comment section below if you have this figure, if yours articulates. Mine doesn't, unless I'm doing it incorrectly. It does articulate, I don't know. I don't want to mess it up or break it. So if you have this figure, let me know if there's articulation on the wrist. Torso. Ooh. Not the greatest articulation. Back, there's a lot. Front, not a whole lot. And there is swivel. Leg. Knees. Oops. Ankles. Not a whole lot because it hits on the boot right there. You can see. And toes as well. So overall, the articulation on this figure. 
so far it's a mixture i don't know about the uh, the wrist torso a lot to the back not to the front and of course the ankle is limited because of the boot itself now let's talk about this figure because man this figure i'll be honest with you i'll say it right now this figure i like a lot more compared to that one don't get me wrong this is a cool looking figure but this one is a standout for one look at the head sculpture the face sculpture it's fine i wish there was something more to it but there isn't it's just there which is unfortunate but it's fine overall you got the painted lips you got the painted eyes then you have her mask on her helmet i should say you got some scuff marks on there which i actually really really like it looks really nice it has that battle damage look to it and i'm a sucker for that and it has that bronze color to it compared to the typical gold with with uh, wonder woman and it looks good though and I gotta say, the face, I like the face, but something about it, oh, I just wish there was like a a menacing kind of face. That makes it like a, almost like a fierce kind of reaction or expression, I should say. That makes sense? This is just kind of plain. It's not bad, but it's a bit plain. So, I don't know, just me. Then you got the hair sculpture design and the paint, nice black and blues. Then you have the armor pieces. This is to me where it stands out. Nice shoulder armor piece right there. It's nice bright silver. You can see the battle marks on their scuff marks. Then you have also on the bicep. And then you have here on her elbows and on her wrist. Um, her wrist itself too. All battle damage. Actually, I like a lot because with, on light, you can see all that battle damage. It makes the figure pop even more. So little details like this. Man... McFarlane nails it. Then you have here the upper torso. You got a weird sculpture design armor piece, which is all smooth, but it has a nice shiny. It's like a light red or red with a little bit of orange. It does have some scuff marks to it, which again, I like that. Battle damage. This is more of like a battle warrior Wonder Woman. Come on, you got to have some damage or scuff marks to her armor. And this is perfect. You can see all that markings on there. I do like the nice bronze color on here. Wonder Woman. And then, of course, the cape. The cape looks clean. Looks plain looking. I wish the cape maybe has some, like, ripped up parts to it. Or just dirty. Because this looks too clean for a battle damage armor. This one... Oh, then again, this is like a nice clean battle damage Wonder Woman. But, anyway, so you get what I'm saying, though. But the cape itself, it looks good, though. Nice and clean and white. And it has like a textured feel to it too, which I, does stand out. And then her belt on there, nice clean belt, right? Also sculpted as well too. You can see the belt buckle on there. And of course the stars on here as well too. And I got to say the upper body on this figure looks really, really good. But the standout to me is going to be the under layer of underneath the armor. That armor, I don't know what this is called, but this piece right here, the black. It's very thick and textured. You can really feel it. And it just looks really good. Especially when you look at the lower body. You can really feel it and see it. That textured. It just pops. And having that nice silver armor looks incredible. Very stylized. Oh, let me show you the back. Very stylized figure. And she does have glutes. Definitely does squats. More of the battle damage on the back. Here's the back of her legs. You can see the back of the boots and for shoes. The shoes are plain looking, not much to it. Which I wish it had like some markings on it because again, this is all like scuffed up, right? But yeah, her shoes are nice and clean. It is what it is though. Sculpture design there. And again, just the scuff marks looks really nice. And the front of it, you can really see that nice spike armor, which looks really, really, really good. And so overall, I gotta say this figure. Good looking figure, man. McFarlane nailed this figure. I was worried how he's going to look. It's going to look really cheap. But man, this figure looks incredible. The only downside, well, not really a downside, but I can see people not liking this because of the articulation, but more importantly, the face. Something about the face, it's not bad, like I said, but just kind of off. I don't know. Wish it had a different expression. This is very plain, but it's all good, though. But apart from that, though, this figure itself looks really, really, really nice, man. Good-looking Wonder Woman. Different from every typical Wonder Woman figure that we usually get. And to me, this is a great addition to the DC Multiverse. Man, I'm really liking this Wonder Woman figure. 
But of course, the main question is, are these worth it? Should he go out and get these figures? We'll start off with the Shazam Wonder Woman. I will say for that figure alone, for what you're getting for 20 bucks, I think that figure is fine for $20. I think you get a lot of accessories, but unfortunately you do get a Wonder Woman figure that's an older version, meaning it's just a repaint or redesign or resell, however you want to call it, because you can see from the joints, it has the old school McFarland joints that I don't like. But for what you're getting though, I think it's a good looking figure. For 20 bucks, yeah. Now, for the Flashpoint Wonder Woman. For the price, honestly, as much as I like the figure, it's not really worth $25 because, think about it, you're only getting two things. You're getting the sword and you're getting the head sculpture for Cyborg. And that's that for $25. So to me, Wonder Woman Flashpoint, as much as I like it, I don't think it's really worth the value of $25. But apart from the price, so what I think about these figures, like I said, the Wonder Woman Shazam one, it's good looking figure. It looks nice. The upper body in terms of the muscle mass, it's not there, but it's fine overall. And the Flashpoint Wonder Woman, incredible sculpture design, that texture. I'm telling you, the underneath texture, that black textured, oh man, it's, it looks incredible and it feels incredible. And again, that's just the black armor underneath. Then you have the armor piece as well too. Has a battle damage and the nice color palette between that nice bright silver with the bronze and that red and orange just pops and it looks really nice. So overall, what do I give these figures? I give both of them a thumbs up. Great looking Wonder Woman figures. Of course, there's that one. I'm not a sucker for it a lot, but it looks good though overall. But this one though, more comic accurate and it just looks amazing. I'm telling you, when you see this figure in person, you're going to want to get it and you're going to be like, damn, I'm glad I got one because it looks really, really, really good. I'm telling you, get this one. This one is fine if you want to have Gal Gadot Wonder Woman. This one, in my honest opinion, definitely a must have. Here we have two Gal Gadot Wonder Woman figures. This is going to be the Golden Armor Edition from the Wonder Woman 84 movie wave because that one, ugh. Well, we don't talk about that movie. The movie was horrible. Then we have Wonder Woman for the Shazam, Fury of the Gods. They're both the same actress, but two different versions of her. We have the classic Wonder Woman look and, of course, the golden armor. I really like this armor piece. The armor looks incredible. The sculpture design, the paint, the detail. That's a good-looking figure. I just don't like the joints because they're old-school ball joints. But I wanted to show you two different Wonder Woman Gal Gadot figures. You can see the different head sculptures. This one looks more like Gal Gadot. This one, like I said, certain angles, it does look like her. Other angles, it doesn't look like her. So, it's all good though. But here we have two different Gal Gadot Wonder Woman. Here we have another Wonder Woman figure. This is going to be the Wonder Woman from the Dark Knight's middle one. With the gold edition, or whatever you want to call it. And then we have the Target exclusive, Flashpoint Wonder Woman. And good sculpture design on this one. I mean, just the detail, and I'm, I don't know why people hate this figure. I get the paint, it's not for everyone, but you can really see all of that detail on this particular Wonder Woman. And I remember this is the Walmart exclusive figure, but anyways, though, two different comic accurate Wonder Woman figures, Dark Knight's Meadow, and of course, Flashpoint. Here we have Wonder Woman from the Endless Winter storyline, and of course, Flashpoint, and the DCEU movie wave. Or DCEU Wonder Woman. And I like this figure. Good sculpture design. But the paint. The paint about this figure. It's not bad. It's just very plain. And you can see these two. The paint. The pouring of paint. Like glossy. Having it glossy certain areas. Just makes the figure pop more. I mean. Look at this one. Right? So much sculpture design. So much paint. Right. But nothing about it pops. And look at this one. Less sculpture design. But that paint though looks incredible and this one having the nice color palette again black but yet nice shiny silver and that bronze the accent bronze it just pops so just showing you three different types of wonder woman a lot of detail but the paint's missing <laughs> less sculpture but the paint's really good and here we have good amount of sculpture but the good and amazing color palette and paint job and here we have merciless this is going to be the Patina Edition from the Dark Knight's Metal Wave. 
And I wanted to show you this figure because of the scaling. Because the scaling on this Wonder Woman is taller than this one. Not a whole lot, but it is a difference in terms of scaling. So I wanted to show you how this Wonder Woman scale is compared to this one. To the build a figure Merciless. And it does reach up to his almost his chest. This Wonder Woman, even though he is leaning to his right, I would say, if I can perfectly, you guys can see that. So what makes her a little bit taller is just because of the spike. But without that, though, she definitely will be shorter compared to this one. Here we have Batman from the Dark Knight Steel storyline or Steel storyline, whatever it's called. And of course, Flashpoint Wonder Woman and DCEU Wonder Woman. And again, the scaling. Scaling is important. This one is going to be taller just a little bit. Again, very little. This one, I got to say, Batman looks short. Am I the only one who looks at that? Like, when I look at this Batman, I like the sculpture on this Batman, but he just looks short compared to this Wonder Woman. And, of course, Flashpoint. And these two look well next to each other. Of course, the medieval, like, armor next to another medieval armor. So these two work well. These two do not. And you definitely don't want to have these two together because look at that. He does look short. Something about the fact that you can see more of her leg makes her look like she's really tall compared to Batman. But nonetheless, so here we have Flashpoint Wonder Woman, Dark Knight Steel Batman, and DCEU Wonder Woman. Here we have both of them standing next to each other. Again, they both look nice, but to me, my favorite out of these two is going to be this one. Again, the sculpture design, the paint, just everything about it looks very well put. This one, I like it. The joints kind of be the issue for me. Another thing that I don't like, like I said, the upper body, her muscle mass, it's not present. So it, it looks like a very slim Wonder Woman. So to each their own though, but let me know which one do you prefer. Comic accurate or DCEU accurate? Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys agree with me on these figures? Do you plan on purchasing these figures? Leave it in the comment section below. As always, make sure you hit the subscribe button to not support the channel, but to keep up to date and watch videos like this. This includes an overview of Wonder Woman from the Shazam Fury of the Gods movie wave and Target exclusive gold label Wonder Woman from the Flashpoint storyline. And on to the next one.